She can just make me host and you'll still be able to screen share, Lynn. Okay, good. I'm gonna make you both co-host. I'm gonna stick around anyway, so. All right, that's what I like. We're recording. Thank you. Seeing the presence of a quorum, I'm gonna call this meeting of governance organization and legislation to order. According to my clock, it is exactly 10.30 in the morning. Um, and pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this meeting or GOL is being conducted by remote participation and is being recorded. I'm going to first make sure that everyone can be heard. And um, so I'm gonna start with Lynn. Yes. And Mandy. Present. And Darcy. Yes. And Pat. Present. And Sarah. Present. Okay, and we have a guest joining us, Martha Hanner. Martha, you just want to uh, say hello? Just want to make sure we can hear you. Can you hear us? That's the first question. Martha, can you hear us? Oh, yes, thank you. I can. Okay, okay. sorry. <laughs> my male, male voice is just, it's hard to pick it out. Um, Yes, uh, I sent something to you, you know, five or 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I just got the message, so. All right. So we have some business to take care of first, Martha. So if you'll be okay. patient, um, uh, you get to watch us in action. I'm gonna turn this over to Lynn. We need to elect a chair and a vice chair. We also need to set times for our meeting. So Lynn, take it away. Okay, okay. so first of all, welcome to the two new people joining GOL. I am not a member of GOL, but I am here to run the election. So the floor is open for nominations for chair of GOL. Pat? I nominate George Ryan. Is there any other nominations at this time? George, do you accept the nomination? Yes, I do. Okay, then I would like to call roll to see whether or not people are in agreement that George will be chair of GOL. I'm going to start I'll try to do this alphabetically. Uh, Pat DeAngelis. Yes. Darcy Dumont. Yes. Mandy Jo Haneke. I vote for George. George Ryan. I abstain. <laughs> Sarah Schwartz. Yes. Okay. Uh, the floor is now open for nominations for vice chair. Mandy Jo. I nominate Pat DeAngelis. Pat, do you accept the nomination? I'm not sure. I want to nominate Sarah. <laughs> if she'll accept, that would be great. I refuse the nomination, but I'm very flattered. Oh, boy. All right, I accept. <laughs> Sarah, you said you, I didn't hear you, Sarah. I'm sorry. You said I, no. I, I, I'm so sorry. I talked out of turn. I said I said I refused it, but I was very flattered. Okay. Are there any other nominations? I talk out of turn here a lot. Hearing none, then I'm going to also do a call, roll call for this. And I'm going to start with, in fact, Darcy Dumont. Yes. Mandy Johanneke. Vote for Pat. George Ryan. Yes. Sarah Schwartz. Yes. And Pat DeAngelis. No. <laughs> <laughs> you now have your chair and vice chair. I turn the chair back over to George and okay. let's proceed. All right. Thank you, Lynn, and uh, thank you, members of the committee. And yes, welcome to Darcy and to Sarah. Uh, this is by far the most exciting and, and really, I think, the sexiest committee uh, we have here in, in town. So I think you're going to enjoy uh, your experience. Um, but the first thing we have to do is agree on a time and a date. We have been traditionally meeting at 1030 on a Wednesday morning until 1230. We try to come to a hard stop. We've been pretty good about that, but there are times when that doesn't happen. Hopefully this won't be one of them. Um, so I need to hear from people whether um, what they wish to do about the time and date. Um, would you want to continue with this time and date? Um, or do you wish to change it? Anyone? Fine with me. Um, is okay, good. Pat? It's okay with me. Okay, Sarah? Yep. All right, and Mandy, I assume it's okay with you? 10.30 to 12.30 is okay. You had listed a possible 9.30 to 11.30. Um, yeah, so I that was, was curious plus, whether yeah. people wanted an hour earlier or not. Either one works for me, so I'd go with the majority of people. 
the chair has a conflict. It's not one he can't resolve, but um, he would prefer to meet at 1030 if okay. that's possible for everybody. Um, no, that, that's fine. It's just we had right. No, I know. We, so we I talked I about it. I agree. Um, but uh, on, and I'm perfectly willing to change it um, for good reason. But I do have a, a conflict every Wednesday from nine until 10. Um, but it's not one I can't get out of. So just want to note for the minutes that there is a seventh counselor in the meeting, although this is not a committee of the whole. Right. Uh, however, she is here to speak to a, um, right. a certain, um, proclamation. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. So we're going to keep to the um, Wednesday, 1030. And that means that the schedule that is currently posted for GOL for 2021 is in fact the schedule. So um, if anyone wants to start filling in their date book, um, we have our next meeting, I believe is February 17th at 10, at, at 1030. The uh, actual minutes, I'm sorry, the agenda reads 930 and that's a mistake. Um, so February 17th, 1030 to 1230 is our time. And the uh, calendar that is on our site and is posted officially um, does follow the 1030 uh, format. And the dates aren't written in stone, but generally speaking, we meet every two weeks. Okay, all right. Um, we have two resolutions in front, to actually uh, two proclamations, a, a proclamation and a resolution. Um, we're gonna deal with the resolution first, so slightly out of order um, because we have a guest here. And, and so um, why don't we turn immediately to the biomass resolution. Um, it should be in your packet. I had done some work on it. Um, I noticed one, at least one mistake that I made. Um, so if we could get that up on the screen. Um, and we need maybe to just briefly before we start into it, um, my view as chair has been always that we do not discuss the merits of uh, a, a proclamation or resolution in this body. Um, this is not the place for a debate of whether you think it's a good idea or a bad idea. And traditionally, it's not been a place for sponsors to speak for uh, their uh, their uh, proclamation or resolution. Um, but that's open to debate by the, the committee. Um, so in my communication to Ms. Hanner, um, I asked her to be present as we always do. We like to have our sponsors present, but I told her that this is not the place actually where we uh, discuss whether we think it's a good idea or bad idea. And it's not the place where uh, sponsors argue for their um, uh, uh, proclamation uh, or resolution in this case. So. Um, maybe some thoughts on that from the committee. Um, that's what we usually do. That's what I was planning to do today. But I think Lynn has suggested maybe a different attitude or approach. So anyone want to weigh in there briefly? I have my hand up. Please, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Darcy. Um, I, I just, I would agree with you, George. And I, I think that the fact that you uh, did not warn the, the um, petitioner ahead of time, you know, I, I think she's prob she didn't probably didn't come prepared to make a presentation at this committee. So um, I, I agree that this is this is not a content committee. So um, I guess I would just say that that doesn't feel right if if uh, Martha didn't have that information ahead of time. Well, I think it's a more of a, a question for going forward. Um... To what degree? I mean, I what Lynn. I, if I, I I'll speak for Lynn here, but she can also speak for herself. The sense is that normally these go on the consent agenda, and the council does not discuss them. So, um, and there's also a matter of time, um, because if we do discuss them, which is perfectly fine, um, that takes up time, and as we know, time has been precious for the council. Um, so, where does an actual discussion take place? of the merits of these sorts of things. I would think normally it would be referred to a content committee um, and they would um, discuss it. And we would just look at it to make sure it's, it's in the right form, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The problem with that in my experience has been, I'm not sure it's a problem, but I think it is for sponsors. There's often a time element. We often get these, you know, and it's like, please get this done right away. And so that kind of creates a, an issue for us. Um, normally you'd send it to another committee, they'd look at it, and then they'd send it to us and we'd, we'd okay it. Um, Mandy. Sorry, I can't, since I'm co-host, I can't actually hit the raise hand Go button. Ahead, raise um, hand. It's fine. I think in previous discussions, we've said when we're concerned about the potential for 
you know, a content conversation that we mention that in a report to the council and it's up to any counselor who would want that to remove it from a consent calendar, a consent right. agenda, and ask and move for a referral or ask for the discussion then at the council meeting um, instead of GOL doing it out of sort of out of its compliance with its charge. So Mandy, your thought is that um, we would allow that sort of discussion if, if it came no, up? Not at GOL, no, it would be. I'm it sorry. Would, so, sorry, I think what we've done in the past when we were had concerns was GOL mentioned that it was really only a non-content discussion. And if there were people concerned with content, okay. it needed to be removed from the consent agenda. So it should be noted, in, as you said, in the, in the yeah. chair's report. Yeah, okay. I Other got, thoughts, please, yeah. Uh, Pat? Yeah, I, was, I uh, don't feel like we should have a presentation of the uh, reasons for the resolution I think we just need to look at it, whether it's clear, consistent, and actionable. When we start listening to a presentation, it elicits a lot of different questions. We start asking those questions. We get into content um, right. almost by accident. And I think that, um, so I don't see the need for a presentation. Okay. I'm gonna ask people to raise their hands. Um, let me open up the participants window. George. I, yep. Let me just add one other thing. If the petitioner, uh, the resident petitioner, along with the two council petitioners, would like to submit for the packet a statement as a preliminary to this, but not part of the resolution, that would be fine. Okay. Yeah. So it should be noted in the report. And secondly, um, they can always submit supporting materials that then can be included in the packet. Absolutely. Okay. And I think, in fact, uh, something like that was sent to the chair, and that would be an example. So that could be included in the packet and noted in the report. And again, as was said, if, if a particular counselor sees that and, and sees that they want to talk about it, then that's what they would, they would obviously take it off the consent agenda. Good. Okay. All right. I don't see anyone else's hand. Um, so I'm going to go immediately to the resolution. It's up on the screen. And uh, the only changes I made, and I made one mistake at least, um, is to insert the and. I also struck the, uh, so normally we just have a title. Um, we don't put the sponsor's name or uh, anything else. Um, at least that's been the tradition. And then it just begins, whereas. Um, the custom is to end each with a semicolon and then and. Um, so under this, the, what is it, the second or third whereas, um, we have a reference to a study um, my, in the past, we strike those because they don't really mean anything to um, the reader of the resolution uh, or proclamation. Um, some thoughts on that? I mean, this is I have, the, yeah, Pat. I have a thought, actually, uh, a step back, which is where you said that we don't normally put sponsors. Yeah. But I'm I'm feeling more and more that I would like us to do that. I know that in Northampton, they do it on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes I would like, mm -hmm. I yeah, I would like it. Um, I don't quite understand why we don't do it. I think it's just custom or habit. I think it's an excellent suggestion. What do others think about um, formally including under the title um, a line which simply says sponsors, which would list, in this case, would list the League of Women Voters and it would uh, list the two uh, council sponsors. Any thoughts on that? Darcy. I, I personally uh, think it would be nice for the, you know, for our archives, for the historical record. So people could tell, you know, that it was the League mm -hmm. of Women Voters that brought this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, their initial resolution was on their letterhead and, you know, it, I, right. I think that it's of interest for historical purposes. Yeah, no, I think I agree. Mandy, I'm sorry, Mandy. Yeah, um, I, I agree. I think I would change the wording a little bit. So my suggestion would be to list the counselors first, simply because our rules say that in general, they must have counselor sponsors. Mm -hmm. um, and I wouldn't call it a petition. I would call it, you know, I would say sponsor, counselor sponsors, and then 
you know, Dumont and Pam or with, with names. And then you could add, if there's a community sponsor or a committee sponsor, you could add community sponsor, League of Women Voters or committee sponsor, you know, if it comes from the Human Rights Committee or, you know, you know, Energy and Climate Action or whatever committee in town it might be coming from that asked for counselors to sponsor, you could add that too. Okay. All right. But I would I would delete the word petition because we are not under any of the petition requirements right now. Okay. Um, so it would be it, it would be appropriate to say petition if it was under the group petition, under the charter or initiative petition or something like that. Okay. Maybe so you have the ability to do an, a real time change of this. Um, I, I'm, uh, I would if I'm the one sharing screen. If Lynn wants me to move okay. it. Or Glenn, if you could uh, just, uh, do you want to shift to Mandy or can you make the change uh, so we can see it as we're talking about it? I, it's pretty straightforward. I don't so, think- So I, I have some additions to add, so it might be better for me to share. All right, fine. Thank you, Mandy. Pat, I think this is an excellent idea. As far as I can remember um, is that it's just been custom. We always just have a title, then we have yeah. the, the document. Um, but I think as Darcy also said, having a historical record, and I don't see why we shouldn't acknowledge. Also, I think when uh, counselors see this in their packet, uh, it gives them another bit of a sense of where this is coming from, um, as opposed to just a, you know, a document out of the blue. So I'm certainly willing to do that. Let's see what it would look like. Um, uh, it'd probably be hard to get it on one page anymore, but that's all right, we can live with that. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> For the sake of history and for the sake of information, <laughs> we can go to page two. Oh, God. Okay. So um, it would read then um, counselor sponsors, counselor Darcy Dumont and Dorothy Pam, community sponsor, League of Women Voters of Amherst. And um, I'm sorry. Can they be in one line together? I, why do we have to have them separated like that? You know, in other words, council sponsors, blah, 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 community sponsors right after that, I, you know, just to save space, George. Thank you, thank you. Like that? Yes. <laughs> okay. Martha has her hand up. Martha, please go ahead. Well, get, unmute yourself, Martha. Yep, got to unmute. Martha, you're still, you're still. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Okay. Uh, my apologies. Uh, okay. I would suggest uh, stating the uh, League of Women Voters of Amherst, but not specifically saying the Sustainability Committee. Okay, just the organization, thank you. Yeah. Great. Great, even better. Yep, good. <laughs> So, good. so did, some, did this is Dorothy? Did somebody address me a minute ago? I, I could no, no, I'm no. Okay, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back on mute then. Okay. <laughs> um, Dorothy, you are a sponsor, so if I can't see you, and that's all right, you don't have to have your video on, but um, and if I get my window open, I should be able to see raised hands. So that's my call here. So let me get that open. Um, but yes, Dorothy, you're welcome to speak as a sponsor. So, uh, so, so far so good. We're at the uh, second whereas um, uh, issue is, has to do with the reference to the study. Um, I think we've normally removed those references. Yeah, right. we have. yeah. now um, we will have at least one, I haven't had a chance to look at Martha's email, but I'm assuming at least one document there is something that could be put in the packet um, so there will be supporting materials available to the counselors if they wish to read them in the packet. Um, the, uh, good, uh, let me see. People can speak up, but I, the next issue I have has to do with the DOER. Um, and so I was gonna suggest as Mandy's already done that you, we, we spell it out and then put the, uh, the uh, acronym after it so afterwards, people know what it means. Um, maybe everybody knows what it means, but I think it's good to write it out. Um, and so that's one change. Again, the sponsors can speak up if they have concerns. 
Um, in the last, whereas this should be the and is struck and it should be a period. Yep. Thank you. I missed that. Um, and then I think it looks like Mandy's made a few changes to now, therefore, be it resolved, the Amherst Town Council. Good. Yeah, I can speak to them. Um, okay. I think we had a capitalized the. Um, I highlighted wherever my changes were because they're practically the same color as yours. But throughout the rest of the resolution, it was referred to as the Palmer Springfield Renewable Energy right. Plan. Right. And here it was only the Palm Palmer. So I thought for consistency, we should add slash Springfield. Yes. I agree. Martha has her hand up. Martha, please. Yeah, it's my understanding that the actual developer is called the Palmer Renewable Energy uh, Company and so on, but the, the plant is going to be situated in East Springfield, and so it gets referred to in the, in the press and in the public as the Palmer slash Springfield plant, but the um, title of the developer is the um, Palmer, wherever it is here, the Palmer Renewable Energy Company. So uh, I can't read this too well as to which you want to refer it to, but that's, that's the difference. Well, I think main goal here is to be consistent and consistent in a way that reflects the facts as the um, sponsors understand them. Um, I just looked at the title and actually the title has plan. Is that a typo or is that, is that, is there a T missing or is that? Uh... Yes. Yes. It's missing. Thank you. All right. I missed that too. All right. That's why we do this folks. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't just do it one person. It, uh, thank you. So I think for consistency's sake, we just should keep referring to it in one way. And since at the title, it's the Palmer Springfield uh, po Biomass Power Plant, I think we probably should refer to it that, or at least using Palmer Springfield consistently, unless it's a specific reference to the company. And so I guess that's the question. Is that reference to the company or is it to the plant? And it seems to be to the plant, correct? Plant. Plant. Right. So I think, and um, you could take out well, no, I don't. Let's let's not get into the weeds. Okay. Um, all right. Again, sponsors, please raise your hand or just speak up. But that's the change we're suggesting. George. Yes. I mean, I, this is a question. Um, it looks like Mandy Joe made the because of change. Yep. Yes. Which was a change I made when I looked at the document, and I'm trying to figure out why. Uh, it's a, I'm going to need help from somebody to how to do markup version. I'm glad that you have it there, Mandy John. It's not about that. But if somebody could maybe um, have a conversation with me later about what I'm not doing correctly about marking a document. Thank I you. I can do that with you, Pat. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, the only change I made here, because I think, George, you were the one that added the because of, there was two thugs. No, that was me. Okay. There were two thes. Yeah. So. Right. Because of the irreparable harm. Okay. And that, um, I don't like dashes. Can we get rid of the dash? Come on. I don't think there is a dash. Okay. That's just too, yeah, there it is. Thank you. That's perfect. Okay. I think it's just extra spaces I'm trying to get rid of here due right. to changes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the only other change I wanted to talk about um, yep. was I add a generally we have in the past when we're talking about state legislation or state committees or the governor within a lot of this we add that we're at the resolved clause to send a copy to places right. so that's what this one here is yes. um and i took this right out of sort of who was referenced within the resolution so the governor the department of energy resources the tele the members of the telecommunications utilities and energy committee and then we always generally include our state senator and state rep so that's something that the sponsors should make sure they are okay with okay. yes what? that's that's fine what was it changed from there wasn't one so i added this whole resolved clause so it's not replacing anything it's an additional it's, clause it's a complete of addition oh. Yeah, it makes very good sense. I think this is yeah. a, a classic example of something that should be sent um, to 
these various bodies. Um, so good, thank you, Manny. I think that's an excellent addition. Any other comments? Uh, I see Patch hands still up, but that may be residual. No, I forgot not. to take it down, sorry. Right. Okay. The last one was, we had to change the year. Right, 2021, that's true. That thank nice. you. It's all right. All right. Um, so we have one last chance to look this over, but I think we've done a pretty good job. Um, I, the sponsors seem to be happy, but they're welcome to speak up if they have any concerns or any other changes they'd like to make. Um, I can just scan it real quickly here. Okay. Yeah, it looks good. Here, I'll page through slowly. Uh, do, you, do you want to put the at the top the council sponsor on one line and then community sponsor starting the next line? My preference would be to do that. I know Pat was trying to save space. That's fine. I don't. I, I respect yeah, that. That's fine. I like the idea of a break. It's just a little easier on the eye yeah. um, and it highlights the different parties, I think, more clearly. And that, I think, is the intent. So people see quickly um, who uh, sponsored this. Um, and um, I put a space I, after the title, if you could. Working uh, on it. That, sorry, Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> You only have two hands, right? <laughs> Takes me a little bit to get through some of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, thank you. Um, yeah. I would take away the semicolon um, at the end of Pam. Oh, yep. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think everything else is good. Um, Need a space there before the be it further resolved. Oh, I can relate to that happening. Oh, that's what it is. Let me get it so it equal. Okay. Okay. And then I think we normally throw that to that side. Yes, we do. Well, the space for a signature. Okay. So I'm ready to entertain a motion. So I'll make the motion. Um, I move to declare the resolution opposing the Palmer Springfield biomass power plant clear, consistent, and actionable. Second, DeAngelis. Okay, we have a motion and it's been seconded. I'm going to move to immediately to vote unless I see a hand raised. Okay. George, I did raise a hand. Please, Dorothy, go ahead. Okay. Um, when I come to a situation like this, where I have just a few lines on a second page in an awkward way, I increase the font size of the whole thing because this is not that large so that there's um, maybe two paragraphs on the second page. And I was just gonna suggest that. Okay. We're gonna have to put a um, header on the town council. Right. This and all uh, so we'll we'll just let I think we should just let um let Athena she will Athena deal with it. With it. Okay, push. very good. Thank you. Yes. Happy to help with that. She makes things look very nice. So it might be able to be squeezed onto one page. Yep. All right. Any other discussion or comments? I'm gonna go immediately to a vote then, and I'm going to start with uh Pat. Hi. And um, Darcy? Yes. Um, and Mandy? Aye. And uh, the chair is a yes. And Sarah? Aye. So the vote is 5 0. Um, it's unanimous. Um, thank you to uh, Martha for being present. And uh, thank you to um, Dorothy. I think Dorothy also is sponsor of another resolution we're going to move to in a moment, I believe. Um, but could I, before we leave this, could, could I just ask a couple 
procedural questions about Monday? Please go ahead. Yes, okay. Oh, and first let me say in answer to what your comment earlier, George, uh, this has been reviewed by a content committee. It was passed unanimously by the Energy and Climate Action Committee Thank before you. we brought it to you. So, yeah, right. yeah. But then Monday, as I understand then, it would go on the consent agenda, which occurs at the beginning of, of meeting more or less. Yes. Uh, which means I would not specifically speak to it. Mm -hmm. So um, do the, all of the council members really have enough information with the, just the resolution and the, and the background memo that I sent? Do you want me to um, send anything more? You're all busy. So don't want to give you too much to read, but. Right, uh, I think the background memo plus the resolution, Lynn? Um, so Martha, I'm glad you asked. Um, first of all, just to note that on Monday, the meeting is starting at 5.30 and it's starting with a presentation of uh, from UMass about their students returning this spring and then from the town, um, from the town of Amherst on vaccinations, okay? Because this is such an urgent issue for all of us. Um, so this will come up in the consent agenda, which probably won't happen until 6.30, 6.45 or so, maybe even a little later. If you would like to add not only your statement that you sent to George, but if you would actually like to add the study that was referred to in the thing, that's fine. I, don't, I can't promise that every counselor will read it, okay? But I do think they have sufficient information. The council is very committed to um, all kinds of things yeah. around and note, note the article in today's Gazette also. Okay. Again, if you just could scan and send that to me, that'd be great. Uh, I can try, I can go look for it, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, Martha. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Well, I'm going to create uh, uh, someday a Hall of Fame of um, GOL proclamations and resolutions. And um, the one that we're turning to now may actually be uh, the, the top entry. This, this is a thing of beauty, I think. So uh, man, man, I'm guessing, Mandy, you wrote this. Um, uh, no, Jennifer Moyston did. Jen yeah. wrote this. The, the, the in the new year. Okay. That is, it's really- See, George, you need yeah. to be careful. Mandy's great. But even last time we met, some yep. of the major changes in the resolution she and I sponsored came from me. And you yep. always assume it's her. I know. And I, know. And I have an ego too. <laughs> no, this, this is based, based on my personal knowledge of Mandy and her life. I actually thought her daughter was involved in this uh, because <laughs> we have Chinese. And this is a first. No, in this one. We have Chinese. And, and my Chinese is a little weak. But I'm hoping that Mandy can help us here with the Chinese. But um, so we have a Lunar New Year slash Spring Festival celebration and proclamation. Um, thank you. The sponsors are their council sponsors, uh, Haneke and Pam. Yep. And, so I just added that onto this. And so uh, I have a few notes. I haven't had a chance to go through. I just have written notes, um, and I don't know what others have. But I'm I'm going to start with the very first whereas clause. I just have a problem with the, the final and reset according to which, um, but maybe it's okay. And was reset? Uh, I just Could be reset. Uh, so the Chinese calendar in past always reset with each dynasty. Right, right. So it's like a past tense reset. Yeah, okay. Okay, maybe we can just leave it then as it is. Um, you have two hands raised. Go ahead. Uh, first, uh, let's start with uh, uh, Darcy. Yeah, I just wondered if there were community sponsors. So it came from Jennifer Moist and I was just checking the page. So it's a town staff. I, I think she does it in her role as either community participation officer or liaison to the Human Rights Commission. But the town announcement for this um, reading and celebration doesn't reference any particular town committee or department. So I'm not sure what to do with that. Yeah, she didn't, she didn't, there was no um, community group involving Chinese she, residents that. She, 
he tried to be in touch with them and did not hear back. And rather than bypass putting forward a resolution, she went ahead and put this together. So I'm happy to call her out for it. I just don't know how to write that. Well, I think it wouldn't be an individual staff person. It would be, uh, unless they're acting as a citizen. She um, is one of our human rights directors. Right, right. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't know what to say to no, that. I, I mean, she, as whether it's human rights director or community participation liaison or something, she is aiming to create more of these for a more inclusive community where we do a lot of these with a lot of celebrations for various different cultural ideals. So she's doing it as a staff member. I just don't know in what role. Yeah, I guess I just, you know, hearing from the Black Lives Matter uh, groups about how they want things to be black led. It just seems a little weird to me. That's all that you could say community participation officer period. I mean, colon and then list her. Well, I feel like if if she if one of her titles is human rights director, that's a more powerful title to be uh, with there than think. community participation officer. I don't think it's an official title. Okay. Yeah, I, think, I think we want to be careful um, assigning sponsors to documents um, as opposed to authors. Um, she authored this um, yeah. perhaps by uh, in, a, in a very fine desire to make us a more inclusive town. I kind of echo Darcy's thought that I really would like this to come from the community. Um, I'm not, I mean, we're, we're going to just read this and, and pass it along, but in the future, or just thinking about this in general, you know, it feels a little strange to have something like this if it's not actually coming from members of the Chinese language community. Um, this one isn't, and that's just a fact, but in the future, um, you, you know, so that's something I think we need to maybe talk about or think about as a, as a council and as a community. Um, but I don't, I'm a little comfortable, uncomfortable making somebody a sponsor or something um, just because they authored it. Um, and that makes sense. And I think also perhaps a lot of this comes, you know, well, yeah. So, and that also, yeah, there's a, a level of detail in this that, that maybe we're just gonna let go um, because we have, we have other work to do. Um, and the, the spirit of it is certainly laudable, but there is a, a level of detail here that, that is unusual for, <laughs> for our, uh, I think, given the past um, kinds of proclamations we've done. Um, it's interesting, I enjoyed reading it. And I think we're probably going to let it stand. But um, uh, I don't know if people have thoughts on that. If they felt that at times this was, you know, more detail than than a normal proclamation should have, uh, insofar as we have normal proclamations. Um, I see two hands up. Let's start with uh, maybe these are residual. But uh, Dorothy, your hand is up. Very brief. Just consistency. The counselor sponsors on the previous resolution were full name. Hear their last name. Sorry. Okay. That's fine, thank you. I see Darcy's hand still up, if that, yeah, I, Darcy, I please. Just, I just, uh, you know, like, I feel like if um, if Jennifer authored this in, yeah. her, in her role as like community participation officer or whatever, doesn't it make sense? I mean, how many how many nationalities do we have in Amherst? Are we going to have a proclamation about all of them? Right. Um, I, I don't know. I guess I just, I, I have nothing against this proclamation and I, I absolutely will vote for it, but I just feel like we maybe want to have a policy where it has to come from a community group. Um, that is celebrating their right. culture, right. Their, you know, their culture. Um, because if it's coming from Jennifer, she really should be writing a proclamation, you know, about how many, about 55 proclamations or so <laughs> with all the nationalities in town. Right. right. We have a lot, we have a lot. That's why I moved here. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm just, just saying, just saying. No, I think it, yeah, it's, um, 
It's a point well taken. Um, I would probably think in, in normal circumstances that the sponsors, the council sponsors would be in touch with the relevant groups um, and, and uh, bringing them forward or encourage them or, or, you know, saying, right. But here it really is sort of a, a town initiated, town sponsored proclamation without um, any obvious clear connection to the community that it's uh, addressing. And I think that is a concern, uh, not the idea, which I think is great, and not the proclamation, which I think is great, but this disconnect is is a bit troubling. Um, and I don't know what to do about that. Dorothy? I do understand what you're saying, okay. But I did notice in this that it's not uh, coming from the way it's written from Chinese community or this community, it said many Asian, many different Asian countries. So, mm -hmm. I, I, that may have been why Jennifer wrote it because rather than seeking out all the different communities to make sure that they all agreed on it. So, but I think the best thing to do might be to ask Jennifer. Okay. Um, she's not here. And again, that's uh, perhaps my fault. Um, I wasn't I should have been, but I wasn't aware. I did not remind myself that she was the author and the sponsor, in a sense. I'll contact her right now. Um, I don't know what people think. I think, um, is this something that, that I guess, I guess there is, the, the Lunar New Year is coming up uh, fairly soon. Again, we're facing these kinds of time constraints. Um, the celebration is on the 9th, the day after right. our meeting. Right, right. Well, so, just go ahead, just do it. Well. So, yeah. Okay. so yeah. I will point out as a sponsor that it has the requisite sponsors from the council in order to move forward. And that's all this committee generally requires. Yeah. Right. So the discussion here might be more suited for a council discussion, really. Yes. Um, yeah. I agree. That's true. Okay, well, let's uh, take a, a look at it. Uh, it does have a lot of detail. Uh, I didn't see a lot of uh, a couple of small things. Uh, other than just my general feeling that this is a level of detail that's a bit unusual. And in some cases, I have no idea whether it's true or not, um, but I assume it is. Um, so uh, second whereas clause, I don't have any problems, anybody? I see Darcy's hand up. I don't know if that's residual. Oh, no. No. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, we're just gonna go through it quickly. Uh, the third whereas clause, I just had a question about the very last line is celebrated this year from the New Year's Eve. That sounds like a, uh, I think it's just from New Year's Eve, or is that? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so that, that should be stricken, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, 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 there's the content question, and I don't know if it's clarity or, or whatever, but it, as was pointed out earlier, this actually now references a large number of um, Asian communities um, and, and countries uh, making the claim that New Year's Day is a time for family. Um, the title of the proclamation is Lunar New Year slash Spring Festival Celebration. Yes. That, that is a Chinese uh, cultural event, right? It's not a- uh, right? It is more than just China. Okay, all right, good. Okay, I just don't know. I just, that, yeah. thank you. Okay, all right. Um, I guess we'll leave the Chinese in. I think it's kind of neat. Um, <laughs> just, I have no idea what that says, but I assume it says. It says, says Shen Xiao. Yeah, I know, okay. I know. That's what it says, Sheng okay. Xiao. <laughs> George, I have a hand up for a point you've been George, dealing with. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to take uh, when you first took out hand. when you took out the the in front of the New Year. Yes, I yes, believe yes. it should go back in Why because exactly? when you say New Year, that means January first to us. Okay. Okay. So the, the writer was making it very clear that the new year, meaning this particular Chinese new year, which is in February. Okay. Uh, to, to me, anyway, it, it clarifies it to put okay. the in front of it because it's not New Year's as we know it. Uh, I don't agree. I think that... It... What about... I mean, it gives the day. It's lunar new year. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that just insert lunar. That makes it, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Does that work, Dorothy? So yes, so it does. Absolutely. Okay. Good. All right. 
All right, next, whereas the Chinese legend has it, we get a history of the Jade Emperor. It's a wonderful story. Um, I hope someone reads this besides us. It's, it's a great story. Um, any changes or concerns about the language? All right. Um, the next, whereas I have two small points, uh, the Lunar New Year, the top comma should come out. Yeah, I think I got that. The comma slash I fixed, right? Thank you. And then I think the second comma also comes out. Yeah. Or maybe that's an old document. Maybe I'm looking at something. It, no, it was, and I fixed some of it now. It's just left over from some changes that okay. we did. And, and we have the ox here in Chinese, which is great. Neo. Yeah, good. <laughs> and then the only other changes I have are in the now therefore, um, in terms of consistency. So it, we have the beginning of the Lunar New Year I think the and or should come out, right? Just should be Lunar New Year slash Spring Festival. Is that right? Yep. For consistency's sake. Um, urge all residents to join the 15 day celebration. That's, that's a laudable, uh, but that's their decision. Beginning with the celebration, reading of the town's first Lunar New Year slash Spring Fest. I think there should insert slash Spring Festival um, uh, celebrate because that's the actual title. So just. Yep. Yeah. And other than that, that's all it's, I had. Yeah. It says voted this day of January. I think we're into February. Oh. That is correct. Thank you. I was working on it in January. <laughs> and that was the year of the, not the ox, but was it the year of the rat? What year was yes. that? Yes. Yes. We're moving from we're the rat. rat. We're in rat and we're moving to the ox. Okay. All right. Um, any other comments, concerns, changes? Um, we have raised a sort of substantive issue that I guess will mull on. I'm not quite sure where that ends up, uh, other than I think at the council level, maybe, um, you know, what we really want to do with these kinds of laudable proclamations, um, but are not coming from the community itself, as far as we can see. Um, but I don't know where that resides. Uh, but that's a, a different question. This seems to be in uh, the proper form. Uh, so I'm prepared to entertain a motion. Or I can make that motion if you wish. Make it, George. To, to declare the Lunar New Year slash Spring Festival Celebration Proclamation as amended to be clear, consistent, and actionable. Is there a second? Second, DeAngelis. Thank you, Pat. Any further comment or discussion? then I'm prepared to move to a vote. I'm going to start this time um, with uh, Pat. Yes. And Mandy Jo. Aye. And Sarah. Aye. And Darcy. Yes. And the chair is an aye. So that's 5-0, unanimous. That is declared clear, consistent, and actionable. Next item, we're going to pretty much going to follow the agenda uh, order is changes to rules of procedure 2.1, 5.7 and 8.1. And that document uh, is in the folder. And if Mandy could pull it up, yep. uh, we will work our way through it. Dorothy, thank you for being present for both and enjoy the rest of your day. All right. So I'm going to suggest that we start with 2.1, election of officers. So George, do you mind if I talk about what I did here? Yes, I would, please go ahead. I, I do not mind, please go ahead. So for those that are just joining us new to the committee, last meeting we talked about, I suggested adding the actual procedure for the election of officers into the rules so that it's clear and knowable by everyone. Um, so that's what the goal of this edition and all is. Um, I took what we followed this past time and modified it slightly. Um, so I went to where the script was for the president and vice presidential elections uh, just a month ago and put most of that in there. Um, some things just in the order got moved around, which is why you see some deletions. They're there, they're just in a different part. Um, 
the only thing that I sort of changed uh, that I wanted to talk about and, and talk about is in the past, um, we have roll called the votes. Um, and instead, um, I am proposing that we do it by written ballot that is still um, compliant with our charter by knowing who wrote, who voted for which person. But that means that no one candidate potentially is preferenced over another candidate by the person who is voting 10th, 11th, or 12th already knowing who won. Um, and so everyone would put their vote down on a piece of paper and then the clerk would count it. I know this is difficult for a, a um, pandemic time, but and I haven't worked that out, but then the clerk would read them aloud all at once so that that no one knows who else has voted for who else when they are voting themselves for an officer. So that's the biggest change from the um, procedure we used in January. Okay, um, I see Pat's hand up, Pat. Yeah, I just wanted to say if we, during, if we still have a pandemic um, when the next council president is elected, uh, it can be put into the chat not publicly, not for everyone, but for the town clerk. So the town clerk would have a record of who it was and they would have, um, and they would be, able, so it would be in the historical and public record, but none of, none of the other counselors would see it. That, that makes sense to me. It seems the chat feature would be something, if I understand the chat feature correctly, that's something that we could do and that would, that would solve that. Hopefully we'll be out of the pandemic by then, I hope. Yeah. Um, if we're not, we're gonna have, probably have bigger problems than how, how we vote for president and vice president. Um, Darcy, your hand is up, please. Yeah, um, I, I think this is a good idea, uh, Mandy Joe's idea. Um, I just have a comment about this other section, which is um, after each nomination, um, or number three, when there are no further nominations, the presiding officer will ask each nominee an alphabetical order by last name if they would like to make a brief statement up to two minutes long. I really don't like that practice. Um, and um, the first time it was used, there was only one person running. Um, and it, that made it weird. Uh, because you know, it just should be open to anyone who wants to make a statement without you know, going around and forcing each person to say something um, or forcing them to say, I decline to say something. Mm. And that, it, 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 is, it just it doesn't make sense to me that it isn't just an open discussion. Why isn't it just a discussion? Okay, open for discussion. Who would like to make a comment up to two minutes or whatever? Um, so I would just say that, that I, I have not liked that practice. Can uh, I ask a question of Darcy, George? Go ahead. Are you referring to the candidates making statements or the roll call after where where all the counselors can talk about the candidates? Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I. Oh yeah, I'm looking at four. I mean, four. okay, <laughs> that that was my question because I I support the candidates having the opportunity to make a statement and us say, setting what order they make those statements in. Yeah. Um, no matter what order they're nominated in. Um, and I, I agree with you, Darcy, that the roll call for each counselor to say yes or no to speaking is strange. Um, so I would be welcome, I would be happy to figure out what we can do about that if there's more support on this committee for instead of calling the roll, the presiding officer will offer each counselor the opportunity to make a brief statement up to two minutes just in open discussion, um, yeah. So it would be phrased something like Mandy just suggested that the presiding officer would um, open the floor to what would allow each uh, committee member to make a statement if they so wish, and then just open the floor and people would raise their hand. Right. We have Athena and Sarah who both want to speak. 
Okay, let's start with Sarah, please. I just wanted to say that I would support doing something like that. I, I also found it awkward that we each had to, felt like we had to say mm -hmm. something. Um, so I think opening it up to whoever would like to say something, you know, each one of us in one time. I mean, I don't know if I would want it to be a discussion. I think that would also be awkward, but just maybe not doing it by roll call. But I mean, if you, just to open it up, does a counselor want to say something? And then if you felt like you need more order, you could say you did it alphabetically or something if you feel like you need that. But I don't, I don't feel comfortable having a roll call where all of us feel like we have to say something. Okay, um, Athena, please. Hi, I'm just weighing in on the um, Mandy's suggestion about sending Chat. votes in through the chat. I don't yep. think we can turn the chat on for counselors only in webinars. In fact, I think we can only use okay. um, the Q&A feature in webinars. Um, I can reach out to IT and see what other settings. I, I think we can come up with a solution that would, that would work, but it, it may not be the chat. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you, Athena. Um, Mandy, maybe you've already started to do this, but if we want to go to four for a moment, it sounds like there is consensus to try and change that in such a way that it's not as awkward as it's been in the past. I agree with what's been said by a number of my colleagues. It is a somewhat awkward situation. And just opening the floor to uh, comment by anyone who wishes to make a comment and um, would seem to be more collegial and more comfortable. And if, you know, and people will raise their hand if they want to speak and if they won't, if they won't but it is somewhat uncomfortable to say, I have nothing to say. <laughs> I mean, what does that mean? On the conversation, I've modified it to read, the presiding officer will allow each counselor excluding nominees to make one brief statement on the election of the office up to two minutes. Well, allowing each counselor sounds like... Um, you could simply open the floor to or open the discussion to. Yeah, it does seem a little bit like, and then the question is, well, how do you make sure every counselor has the opportunity? Um, and then we get into calling the roll, which is the whole thing we're trying to avoid. This doesn't say you have to call the roll, and Mandy's changed that. But um, is there some way, I mean, this could be interpreted as, as what we're saying, which is just, you know, the floor is now open. Anyone can make a brief statement if they wish. Yeah, I think it um, just but if, we could, if they wish. Yeah, so we'll open the floor to or allow each counselor to make one brief statement on the election of the office if they if they so wish. You could just put if so if they so wish at the end, um, or you could say open the floor to uh, each to counselor. To counselors, not to each counselor. Right. The counselors. Right to the counselors. And Thank you. One brief statement if they wish on the election of the office on the election of the office up to two minutes, okay? Good, I think that that covers it. Anyone, any thoughts about four as amended? I don't see any hands. Um, any other thoughts about the rest of what Mandy has put here? Um, to my reading of it, and I read it carefully, um, it does follow the process quite carefully. I didn't see any uh, typos or mistakes of that kind, but I thought uh, any other thoughts here? Or do people need some, do I want to take a moment and read this one last time? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Can't make it too much, too smaller to fit it all in. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> if you want to be able to read it. <laughs> we could go through it line by line if you wish. I mean, it would take a few minutes, but I could just read it out loud. So B, the president shall preside over the election of the vice president, period. D, the election shall be run as follows. One, presiding officer will ask counselors nominations. Oh, four nominations. Thank you. So let's insert that. The <laughs> that's all right. That's where we're going to do it. The presiding officer will ask counselors for nominations. Uh, sub uh, one, nominations are limited to a name, comma, not an explanation or discussion, period. Two counselors, um, do you want to capitalize the N? I did on the screen here. Thank you. I'm reading the old document. Yep. Counselors may nominate themselves, period. Three nominations do not require a second, period. Uh, 
Roman two, after each, excuse me, Arabic two, after each nomination, comma, the presiding officer will ask the counselor nominated if they accept the nomination, period. Sub one, acceptance is limited to a yes or no, comma, not an explanation or discussion. Three, when there are no further nominations, comma, the presiding officer will ask each nominee, comma, in alphabetical order by last name, comma, if they would like to make a brief statement, comma, up to two minutes long, period. Presiding officer will call the roll, comma, and each counselor, comma, excluding nominees, no, comma, mean, I'm We sorry? changed that one, George. Thank you, let's read the right one. The presiding officer will open the floor to counselors excluding nominees to make one brief statement if they wish on the election of the office up to two minutes. Thank you. Let me read from the right screen. The clerk number five of the council will then ask counselors to vote by written ballot, period. Now, is that something everyone is accepting? It sounds like we are, but we, we wanna to go to a written no. ballot, okay? One, ballots will list the name of the counselor voting and the name of the nominee the counselor wishes to vote for, comma, or abstain, in quotes. The clerk of the council will collect the ballots and read each one out loud as follows, quote, counselor X votes for counselor Y, period. After reading each counselor's vote, comma, the clerk of the council will announce the results. The nominee, excuse me, the nominee who receives the majority of votes, at least seven yes votes, will be deemed elected to office. If no nominee receives a majority of votes, the presiding officer will repeat the process beginning with section D1. And finally, the clerk of the council will swear in the officer after the election period. I have one comment. Um, is it clear that the clerk of the council has to wait until all the ballots are in before she reads them out? There we go. And after all ballots are submitted, right, or returned, submitted, returned, submitted, it's fine. Read, Read each one out loud as ahead. follows. Okay. Can we have Athena, please. I sorry to interrupt again. I'm I'm curious if if written would include an electronically submitted ballot or if we need to specify whether or not it's on paper while we're in virtual meetings. And do um, you know how we do that? I'm, I'm sure I can figure something out. I've got several months to do it if we're still in virtual meetings at that point, um, but I don't wanna be in a, in a position of having to drive to everyone's houses to pick up ballots. I mean, if we talk about the charter that had in writing for that 8.1 open meeting, we allowed that to be electronic right. submission. So it might be better than putting paper down here because it'll allow a little bit more leeway. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you, think, if you think written, like if you think written, will cover it, then that's work fine. or something. Right. Okay, if if written can encompass that, then that sounds good. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Athena. All right. Um, I'm willing to entertain a motion uh, to accept these changes. To I'm sorry. We would be recommending. Rick, I'm sorry. Thank you. A motion to recommend these changes to uh, Rule 2.1, Election of Officers, as amended uh, to the Town Council. So moved, Haneke. Any other further discussion, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, I'm going to move immediately to a vote. This time I'm going to start uh, with... We haven't had a second. Oh, I'm sorry? Second DeAngelis. I was oh, waiting sorry. for somebody else to jump in. Okay, well, I apologize. We have a motion and it has been seconded by Haneke. I'm sorry, by Pat. Um, and uh, no further discussion. Then let's go to a vote. And I'm gonna start with Sarah this time. Aye. And the chair is an aye. Uh, Pat? Aye. And Darcy? Yes. And Mandy? Aye. Okay, so that again is unanimous 5-0 to accept these changes or as to recommend these changes to rules of procedure 2.1 as amended. Next item. There we go. Do you wanna do open meetings or do you wanna do the rule eight changes? 
I was going to do open meeting unless there's a okay. reason to do them out of order. I was going to do them in order. Is there okay. a reason? Okay. I mean, yeah. Um, so this is rule eight point, I'm sorry, 5.7 open meetings. And um, let me get it on my screen as well. I don't have to stick my face right in. So here. this was an attempt to follow the sort of discussion we'd had the last couple of weeks and the um, addendum D or appendix D or whatever it was in that other document. Right. So we're trying to establish a, a procedure um, so that citizens know and we know how open meetings and initiatives are to proceed. Um, and so this is what Mandy has suggested. And so why don't we go through it line by line? Um, unless people need further, I see a hand up, Darcy, please. Yeah. Um, I know that the, the, the meeting that is happening on Thursday um, went through a process of uh, getting an opinion from KP Law. You probably talked about that already. Um, um, that did indicate that digital signatures were acceptable. Um, so the form that I saw did not seem to be open to that possibility, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Um, so it just makes sense to me that if we have the capacity now to do digital, um, we, and especially in the pandemic, um, that that, it, the KP law pretty much rendered an opinion saying that that was okay. So are we, are, is, is our uh, form um, allowing that possibility? Pat, your hand is up. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure whether this is the place to bring it up or not, but I'm looking at um, A. Yeah, this again speaks to the issue of, I understand that the petition needs to be signed by 200 residents who are 18 years or older, and I believe that's the legal requirement. However, I feel like this should say, and any form should say, would say that um, any resident can sign, but you know, or something, because I feel like uh, I I am going to be actively working to recruit high school and junior high school kids for some issues, and I feel like they have a right to sign and they have a right to request an open meeting. So somehow or other, I still need to see if we can figure out a way to address that. Actually, I'm not out to recruit high school and junior high school kids. I don't know exactly why I said that. So, well, we have, we have so two issues. Yeah, Mandy? I, I think what we had talked about last week was let's get the procedure in that talks about 8.1, the charter 8.1. Um, and then the council can discuss whether they want to adopt a separate rule that would allow for signatures of residents under 18 years of age to count towards a signature number requirement or written request requirement, but it would have to be a separate rule of some sort. I mean, we could put on here, if you want to acknowledge residents that are under 18, we could put on here residents under less than 18 years old may make a request but will their 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 names will not count towards the 200 person requirement it seems kind of cruel to do that though yeah, it does i think that that we have two issues here um let's deal with the second one quickly first and then go back to darcy's concern about um electronic signatures and the whole format here um I think, Pat, that this does raise some larger questions that are going to, it's going to take uh, a discussion at the council level eventually, but um, we're not ready, I think, for that discussion. I'm not ready to make a decision on this yet. I have some reservations. I understand your, your uh, desire to change it, and I may be in a minority of one, 
but I think that's going to take a little bit more discussion. And I think Mandy's point is we do really want to get this set um, going forward. Um, and so I would suggest that we not try to tinker with this and put a kind of complicated wording about residents eight, younger than 18 years, because I think there just needs to be a lot more discussion um, eventually at the council level. I guess I'm uh, concerned that there won't, a discussion with the council won't happen. Um, well, we could bring it. I mean, that's but, something we yeah, as GEO yeah, could do, I, and then we yeah. could bring it to the council. And I think it's going to be that discussion that's going to be the final one. But um, I'm certainly willing to put that on an agenda, but um, and maybe even next time. But I don't feel comfortable taking it up now, um, given all that we have on our plate and given. Um, but that's just my thought. That's one person. So um, the rest of you need to think about whether this is something you want to tinker with right now or whether you want to wait and come back to it. Um, because I think it's going to take a lot of talking, at least to convince me. Now, maybe everybody else is gung-ho, but I have some reservations. I also have a question for Mandy, um, which came to me at the last council meeting. I still don't understand how we can uh, overrule the charter yeah. <laughs> by changing a rule of procedure. We, we can't overrule the charter. Yeah, that's the helped charter me with eight one requirements, section eight one requirements are the requirements. And so if right. a resident wants a, an open meeting of the residents under the charter, they must have 200 signatures of 18 years or older residents. Right. But right. we as a council can call a meeting anytime we want. So right. if we want to mimic the charter open meeting of the res residents within our rules, we have these work sessions, we have these discussions, um, we could add a council rule of procedure mm -hmm. open meeting request that just says 200 residents aged five or older or whatever, but it yeah. would not be a request under the charter. Okay. okay. It would be the council saying, hey, right. we want to expand it. So we're going to create a new meeting type. Uh, right. Okay. A new another meeting. council okay. could delete, right? The exactly. charter we can't change, but another council after two readings could delete that that new meeting type. Okay, all right, thank you. That helps me. I, it's it's your point is well taken. Um, and I think it raises a lot of questions in my mind that I'm certainly not eager to discuss today. So um, I'd like to discuss them. I'm even willing to put them on the next agenda or a, a, agenda soon, but I'd like us to make a decision on this today. Um, but that's just me. So others may speak to that. Um, but that's what I would suggest that we um, move this forward, um, if we can, and come back to the uh, issue of age, and maybe an entirely different uh, 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 meeting process under the rules of procedure. Um, if that's okay with people. Um, can we come then? I'm sorry, anyone? I was just going to get back to Darcy's. Yes, please. Could you comment? Um... So A quotes the charter, essentially, section A, the request in writing by at least 200 residents. So I wouldn't want to add language to that one because it's a charter quote, per, essentially. Mm -hmm. But B and C are sort of where I think we could address Darcy's concern that it's not clear that printed names, typed names, electronic names are permissible. Um, you know, C, we say you can submit it in person or by email. Um, you know, that implies a scan thing or an electronic thing. And B is the one that says they provide a legible name and legible address. We yeah. could, instead of legible name, maybe move to electronic typed, you know, we could provide some options there, maybe. Um, I, I just, I think that's where that concern could be addressed more and then certainly add similar language into appendix b that sample document whatever we decide on in the rule why can't an electronic signature be just assumed to be sufficient as a signature why, why do we have to specify it i um, we ask for a signature whether it's in ink or blood or electronic yeah. um you know do, do we really have to be that i mean the point is we need three one of three options you need to provide us with and you know so if we, it's electronic fine if it's if it's handwritten fine yeah i thought darcy was referring to just the the listing of the name not the three options of phone number email address or signature Dar yeah. darcy, did I misunderstand you i'm sorry yeah i just want wanted to make it clear that the petition could be 
made in writing or electronically, right. Right. you know, by right. hand or electronically. So could we just put those words in there somewhere? Okay. And Mandy, where would you say, if we do that, where, again, I think you were suggesting it, if you just repeat, where would we put it and how would we put it? Yeah, that's what, what I'm not sure. I think it okay. should go in either B or C. Right. Okay. You know, because C says the request shall be submitted either in person or by email. Right. 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 You could say okay. residents making the request shall provide either in a, uh, a written or electronic form in B. The residents making the request shall provide in either a written or electronic form, and then the rest of it would just go that way. Would that be, would that cover it? About through a written or electronic document? Yeah, right. Something to that effect, put it right there. Um, because I, I hear what Darcy's saying and, and going into the future and even now, um, I could imagine that someone would put a petition together electronically um, and people would fill it out and we're, we wouldn't insist that they then turn that into a, into a physical document where people have to sign it again. Um, so um, would that meet Darcy's concern? Yeah, and then that could be emailed to the, the town council. Yep. Um, should we also say something uh, in appendix, what, a, what is it, appendix B or something? B. Um, because that gives the impression that it's just an old style written form that's being required. Right. We will make, right, we would make the requisite change there as well. No, I think that that's excellent. Any so, other thoughts from uh, the rest of you about this? I mean, I'm assuming you agree that, that both of these formats um, are appropriate and we wanna make that clear, both in the rules of procedure, but also in the, uh, document that we're creating that would be available to the public. Um, so everyone knows that you can go either way. So I just added the appendix B yeah. in the title for written or electronic use. Thank you, that looks good. Good, okay. Okay, um, so Mandy has made a few changes back to the actual text. Um, Right. So, so that is the one I think we need to talk about. Thank you. Do you have anything you want to start us off with here, Mandy? With D, just. I, yeah. I mean, this is the one where we were hung up last couple meetings in the committee um, on notice. Yep. Um, you know, and so I provided a couple options. One is they notify everyone whose name was on the request, so all two hundred plus. Um, in the comments, I said, you know, some other options include um, the first 10 residents who made the request. So the first 10 listed um, or the first one listed, you know, that number could change to whatever. I picked 10 because the initiative petition chooses 10 and it's not the first 10 on the initiative. In the initiative petition, the petitioners have to declare what 10 will be sort of the lead initi initiators for notice purposes. Um, or we could just say it goes on the bulletin board and they're, you know, and leave out of the rules, whether the net, the residents who signed the request or made the request are notified at all specifically, or sort of the two options right. that are right. also on these in the comments. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've already spoken on this a little bit, so I'd like to hear from the rest of you first before I start uh, pontificating. Here's yeah. another one. It could be notify the resident submitting the request. Mm -hmm. You know, whether that's the person who actually sent the email to town council at or who went to the clerk of the council by hand and said, here's the request. Pat, your hand is up, please. Oh, you're muted. Sorry. Um, I think that would be adequate because um, there would be public 
um, information put out um, on the town website, but also in the council meeting, I'm sure it would come up that we've received a petition or uh, a request for an open meeting, and it would be announced on the agenda and verbally in, when the presiding officer says these are the things that are coming up. So there would be ways for community members to get the information. So I don't think we should burden the staff with uh, sending it out to everyone. So just to the one resident who submitted their request or just bulletin? Yeah, either that or the first 10, whichever people are more comfortable with. But I think it's enough to have just the person who submitted the request. I mean, for those of you who weren't here present last time, I'm sure you can imagine the argument was that this just puts, uh, th that puts a, a very strong, heavy burden on staff. And it's also an expense um, if you have 300, 400, whatever. Um, on the other hand, uh, there is the desire that the public be notified. We don't, we, we want them to be there. They've gone to this effort to have the meeting. The meeting is now going to be held. We want to make sure they know uh, when and where it's going to be. Now we have fairly robust procedures for getting out information. We, uh, some of us have newsletters, we all have district meetings, um, but is that, I guess the question is that sufficient um, in terms of making sure that everyone is notified or at least has an ample opportunity to become notified as opposed to having staff go through the entire 200 or 300 or whatever many names and I assume send a, a postcard. I guess it would have to be done by mail. You, I know, I, and you, you know, if you don't have a mailing address, I mean, again, the question becomes, well, everyone has to submit a mailing address, I assume, um, or do you want them to call them? Um, it, so the burden factor is what led some of us to think um, there are more than ample ways for citizens to find out when meetings are being held. Um, and uh, so it's not incumbent on us to notify every single person. So Darcy and then, so let's actually start, yeah, Darcy first, then Sarah, please. Yeah, I would say, I mean, my preference would be um, all of them in particular, if it were a digital petition that would take no longer to notify all of them by email than it would be to take, to, to contact one, but right. that's assuming it's digital. Right. But so a, a compromise would be the, the first 10 and that's customary for petitions like this is to no notify the, the first 10. Okay, Sarah, please. I'm wondering if we want to agree on which way we put out the, the meeting, the request was granted and the meeting was happening actually in this so that when people, when, when the one person submits it, everyone who has read the petition or who wants to look up our would say, you know, if we want to say the first 10 or the one five, um, but then I don't know if you want to say the council or the town will put out an announcement of this and then just put the ways in which we are going to put it out, whether on the website, um, a, a, you know, 24 hours after it's a, you know, announced or, I just think maybe you should, if we made it official where we were putting it out, because I think that sometimes people are like, well, where can I find if this is going to happen? So if we're going to say that district meetings will have it, we shouldn't leave it ambiguous, I guess is what I'm saying. We should decide which way and just put it there, maybe. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, so go ahead, Manny. We just have published notification. Sarah makes a good point that we don't say how, how early that notification should be published. You know, it, it has determines the, you know, and the, council president sets the date, time, and location. It says once the council president sets it, the clerk shall publish notification. Um, we could add a sentence that says notification shall be published and sent at least however many hours or days in advance. Pick a number. Um, one week, seven days, 10 days. I got the sense from Sarah, though, it, what's more important is that people know where to look. So we right. have that it's going on the bulletin board. Right, exactly. Is that enough? And and that's a question for Sarah and for all of us. Um, but I, I maybe I'm misunderstanding her point. But the idea was that somehow they would, you know, in the document itself, perhaps as well as in the rules, it would say where <laughs> notification would be. Sarah, please. 
I think I was just looking for clarification, just being on the, the public's end. I mean, I think it just makes it clear if we're only committing to the bulletin board, then that's fine. You know, I just mm -hmm. think if that's what we're committing to, then we'll just say the bulletin board. And, but yeah, I do think within a certain amount of time, because it okay, you know, people could wait for forever, or they could just say, oh, well, I'm reading this. This is when it was accepted. I know that I'll find it seven days from now or 48 mm -hmm. hours from whatever. Yeah. Fair enough. I'm fine with the timeline just to make it specific. Thank you. At least 10 days in advance of the meeting, seven days in advance, seven and 10 because of the charter stuff are practically the same. And seven doesn't count weekends, 10 does. So they end up pretty much being the same amount of time. Let's put 10. I would suggest 10. And we could add town calendar too, instead of just the bulletin board. They're slightly different. The town calendar is where all the meeting notices go. Yeah, that's a good idea. Oops. Speaking out of turn here. It's all right. This, this that's how we do it. <laughs> this, this is a group process. We don't. Uh, so don't worry about that. Are we to 10 residents or one resident? That's a good question. I don't know. I mean, I've heard 10 a lot. I, To me, and part of it is just, it seems like whoever the first 10 are is somewhat random, isn't it? But maybe the thought is whoever's putting this together, you know, knows that. And so make sure that those 10 people are, you know, obviously very much involved in it and would, we assume then, uh, spread the word. Um, so um, are people confident that the, the, the use of 10 in the past has pretty much captured some of the more passionate and involved individuals. They tend to put their names on first, um, or is it just a random thing? You could just get ten people. You just got on the, you know, out in front of a stop and shop or something, and you know they get the notice, but they go, well, okay, what am I supposed to do with that? Perhaps an unanswerable question. So we'll leave it at ten. Okay, so let's read it. Once the council president determines the request, oh, excuse me. Once the council president determines the request meetings, the requirements, I think there's a problem with that. Or oh, I'm not... The request meets the requirements. Thank you. Of charter section 8.1 and sets the date, time and location for the meeting, comma, the clerk of the town council shall publish notification of the open meeting on the town bulletin board and town calendar and not maybe a comma there and notify the first 10 residents who made the request. Notification shall be published at least 10 days in advance of the, in advance of the meeting, in advance of the meeting, I guess, of the open meeting, yeah. Any thoughts on that? Changes, problems, concerns? I'm not seeing any hands. Um, are we ready to um, accept? Shall we look at Appendix B yes, no, you're right. for that to be part of the motion? Right. Um, so let's take a look at the appendix. For some reason, everything's in 14 here. I'm just going to change it. Okay. So Appendix B, if you could just scroll. Okay, that's all right. So yeah, so that's what it looks like. So this is what someone would see on their uh, screen if they're doing it electronically and also something they would see physically if we're handed to them. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Darcy. Um, should we um, just... I'm a little confused about the language of written or electronic. And then down below it says this form um, is to submit this written request. Um, so, so again, that language right here is taken from the charter, the submit the written request. Right. So it Part seems like written. above. Above it, maybe it should say um, of or paper, <laughs> or 
for um okay. yeah and maybe i forget what we put up above but um so then written covers both yeah what if we were to take the written out, even though it comes from the charter language? Is the charter language sacred here? It does seem to create potential confusion. Someone reading that might think, well, this is actually an electronic, um, not a paper thing. Um, do we need the written? Could it just be, uh, you must submit this request? I, I think that might make it less confusing. And because up above, it makes it clear it could be paper or electronic. I would normally understand written to mean paper, to re, you know, handwritten, whatever. That may just be me, but if we could just, even though it is the charter language, I think we could still, in this case, it's not being quoted or anything. I would suggest say just this request um, for an open, right? And that way, I think people would see that you could do it either way. Okay. What, what, what did we say up above? Um, do we need to change that to paper or not? Um, through a written or electronic document. So we can change that to paper or electronic. Right. Yeah, I think that, that that's good. Where's the appendix? There it is. Okay. So, um, Town of Amherst, Massachusetts, request for an open meeting of residents, Amherst Home Rule Charter, Section 8.1, then the date. The following residents, 18 years or older of the Town of Amherst, submit this request under Amherst Home Rule Charter, Section 8.1, to the Amherst Town Council for an open meeting of residents of the town, stating the following specific issues or concerns related to matters upon which the requested body may act. Parenthesis, please include purpose or purposes of the meeting. Should we get rid of the please? Because you must include the purpose of the meeting. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Then we have a legible name. Then we have a legible address. These are both required. I don't know why. Uh, check if 18 or older. Um, since you must be 18 or older, I mean, help me here. See, this is this is broken record, DeAngelis. Yeah, I go ahead, broken record. <laughs> I think it, that should be there if um, you're allowing people who are 18 or under 18 to sign a, this petition. And I think that they should be able to sign it. it. Right now, the rule is that we're only counting the 18 year old or people who are 18 year older. Um, but I think that we have a, a responsibility to see is out there so i would like to see again see something here you may sign this if you're 18 i don't know and i apologize i don't have a better argument but i'm uncomfortable with um I, that column needs to be there in some way uh, so that people who aren't 18 are welcome to sign the doc and sign it as well so i changed it to instead of check if to confirm 18 or older because there's nothing that prevent, prohibits anyone from signing this um, and right. encouraging yes. people to sign it, but it only, uh, in terms of the actual open meeting being called, um, 200 have to be 18 or yeah, older. Yeah, I understand that, but I so, think that there should be um, possibly something in the uh, introduction that says okay. you are welcome to sign because, well, I don't know. That's my broken well, record. I said I was gonna be a broken record. No, no, I mean, that maybe that's something we can discuss right now. I mean, because the change yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't require any kind of rule procedure or any kind of special meeting or anything else. It's what we'd be saying, and this is, maybe we don't want to talk about it now, but, but what we'd be saying would be, you know, anyone is welcome to sign this, um, but uh, I don't know, does that, what, so, any thoughts? Yeah, Mandy? What we could do is somewhere in this title range, Amherst Home Rule Charter eight, Section 8.1, somewhere underneath, maybe put something like um, to comply at least 200 residents 18 years or older must be listed or something. Uh, yeah. You know, something that in this title says to be valid. You know, I'm, I'm not coming up with some great wording, but we don't actually hear, have anywhere on this document 
in on this appendix that it needs to be 200 people. Um, right. Right. You know, so maybe under that, in that section heading sort of you put 200 residents 18 years or older are required for a meeting to be called or something. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then you could put the following residents of the town of Amherst, you could get the 18 years or older, and then we could go back to check if 18 or older. Yeah. Yeah. My, yeah. Original, yeah, my original question was why is this even here? Is there something legally, you, even though, because the, the original thought was only people 18 or older were gonna sign this because that's what it is. And so why are they checking it? But by putting it here, um, it does open the, op the opportunity for or the encouragement for others to sign it as long as it's clear, as Mandy said, in the actual document that only those 18 or older will actually count to the, to the, the quantum needed to the 200. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Right, and and that would be perhaps a way to address the concern that Pat has um, raised and others have raised, or the desire to encourage others, especially say teenagers, to become uh, involved in this um, without us having to, to fiddle with the rules of procedure um, and not being in violation of the charter in any face fashion, uh, simply by making some adjustments to this form such as Mandy's suggesting, what do people think about that? Would that be a way of, um, in a sense, doing both things? We do, find, we do have a document now that's ready to go, assuming it's approved by the council, and it does allow or encourage um, all residents to sign it, um, but only those 18 or over um, will be counted in the, in the, uh, the quantum. Is that? What about the changes I just did? Right, I went back to check if 18 or older. Um, and then up here, I said, for the council to call a meeting, 200 Amherst residents, 18 or years or older must be listed. Okay. That's certainly better. Okay, <laughs> it's better, all right. <laughs> The hard woman to please. All right. I know, babe. It's better. Um, and I get, again, I understand, Pat, that at some point, maybe soon, we want to have a discussion as to whether uh, younger uh, aged residents could be counted to the quantum. Right. I mean, it would be terrible to have in this, uh, if, you're, if you're less than 18 years old, you're not counted. I don't want to say that. And I understand right now with the charter and everything, that's who we can count. Um, so this feels like a, a compromise. And it may provoke discussion amongst the counselors. And when it comes to the council for their decision, this will very clearly suggest a certain approach we're taking. And if people have concerns, they can raise them, or if they like it, they can speak to it. And that mm -hmm. also might give us a sense of where GOL might go in the future. Um, right. if we tremendous council resistance to this suggestion. That would be a sign that maybe um, you know, GOL probably is not going to take this up, but if we get either no response at all or a positive response, that would seem that we could then take off. Go up. further. Yeah, yeah we'll go further. All right. Um, Darcy has her hand up. Yes, Darcy. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I would just say this is this is a. I really like this as an improvement. You know, like a phase one of moving toward getting a getting the vote for people under 18 in Amherst. Uh, but yeah, you could definitely take this and and try to try to get young people to sign it. Um, and then, you know, a petition that had, you know, 50 or 100 youth sign it will 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 be given more weight, you know? And it would also be evidence to me, and, and not that I need it, but I think probably given my nature, it would mean something to me. If we start, <laughs> no, if we start getting um, documents like this and a large number or a substantial number of young people are signing it, that would be evidence to me of, of a, you know, that we really should seriously consider lowering, lowering the age. Yeah. Right now, to me, it's fairly hypothetical. I think that, right. having, yeah, so that's, yeah. So I'd I mean, like, I just... I'm sorry, go ahead, Pat. No, go ahead, George. I'm sorry, I interrupted. I was going to move us on. So, Pat, please. That's fine. Okay, so, good. Yeah. Shall I make a motion? 
Yes, that's. That, I'll okay. second it. <laughs> Great, Tristy, he hasn't even heard it yet. <laughs> I know, but I know. <laughs> um, I'm to, move to recommend um, the revisions to Rule Five Point Seven and the addition of Appendix B uh, to the Council. Second. So we have a motion that uh, Joel wishes to recommend um, these uh, changes to uh, Rule 5.7, ROP 5.7, as amended. It's been seconded. And the addition of Appendix B. Yeah, I'm sorry. And the addition of Appendix B. Now, I see the letter E there in the document. But nothing. Right. Can we get that out of there? Thank you. Um, any other Comments, thoughts, changes, concerns? I seeing none, I'm gonna move immediately to a vote. This time we'll start with the chair. The chair is a yes. Mandy Jo? Aye. Darcy? Yes. Pat? Aye. And Sarah? Aye. Okay, very good. Unanimous, five zero. Um, third item is rule 8. of procedure 8.1. .1. And let us go there. How are we doing on time? We're at 12, 11, okay. George, sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to let you know, we have this on the on the calendar tentatively for the council meeting on Monday. Lynn wanted me to let you know. Uh, we have these changes to the rules of procedure. Uh, first, yeah. first discussion on Monday the 8th, if we're done with them today. Right, okay. That's good to know. All right. So again, we were asked to figure out a way to be clear as to who can introduce bylaws. Um, and so that's what these additions do. Um, general bylaws are non-zoning bylaws and they follow in general our requirements for proclamations and resolutions other than the fact that it adds town manager designee or town committee into it. Um, so that's something like ECAC or the Housing Trust or the Historical Commission could actually propose a bylaw, could introduce and initiate a bylaw change, revision, um, if it's a general bylaw. Zoning bylaws add a whole lot more people, and I will say that is because Chapter 40A adds a lot of people. And so I tried to make that list. The Councilors, ZBA, Planning Board, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, um, an individual owning land, the request of 10 registered voters, those, so one, two, three, four, seven, and eight are directly out of MGL chapter 40A, five and six follow the above general bylaws, and, and so does nine, follows the other three in the general bylaws. Okay, I see Darcy's hand up. Darcy, please. So I'm just wondering what what's the what what's the impetus for the change? I think Darcy, there was um, confusion amongst a number of people about um, who could bring um, bylaws to us, and it felt um, that it needed uh, some clarification. So it is not trying to exclude anybody. Um, but it is trying to give some clarity to who, in fact, uh, can actually bring a bylaw. And with zoning bylaws, it's actually governed by MGL, right. um, at least to some degree. Um, but with the uh, regular bylaws, it was very, very unclear. Um, could an individual citizen bring a, a bylaw that we would have to? Uh, so what's the? So here, the point was to get it clear. Um, I don't know if that helps, but that was kind of the, the drive behind it. It wasn't to exclude anybody, but it was there was just a lot of uncertainty in people's minds as to what, um, who could do what. So it does the general bylaw, like you said, doesn't include an individual citizen. Um, and right. is there anything, right. anything else that's included in the first section there? So the general bylaw does through group petition or initiative. So one random resident cannot come to the council and actually introduce 
a bylaw amendment under the general bylaws that we would then have to consider. They would have to follow the group petition. It's the same for resolutions and proclamations that we've adopted as, as a GOL. It, it has to have a counselor. A counselor can, but the residents need to either find a counselor to introduce that measure or go the group petition route. So in the I've seen in the past that where the council president gets a request from a, a, a citizen and then she sends it out to the whole council saying, does anybody, is anybody interested in, in um, sponsoring this? Well, Darcy, these are just bylaws, okay? So right, we're, talk, we're talking about bylaws here, not about proclamations, resolutions, et cetera. So with those, yes, she will send out a notice but um, with bylaws, the question is, so general bylaws and zoning bylaws, that's what we're de dealing with here, not with proclamations, resolutions, citations, et cetera. Is that? So I think the president could still operate the same. The, yeah. the question is we have a lot more requirements. It has to be in the form necessary for final adoption um, as Pat and I and Kathy can attest and, and even Shalini with, um, the Wild Animal Act, a lot of the times when you get a request for a bylaw, it's not in the form necessary for final adoption. And so a counselor, if the counselor wants to sponsor, it has to do a lot of work to prep it for actual introduction. And so the president, if they get a request from someone like, like there was an email to the council regarding the Wild Animal Act, mm -hmm. um, they can send it out and say, does someone want to sponsor it? Be aware here's your requirements. I have a question, Mandy, about group petition or initiative. Um, just a practical question. One requires a, a somewhat less number of uh, voters to sign or to write to be, right? So why would one choose one over the other? Is it that the petition process is a little more um, a little more distant from the council directly I just question about why would one I mean it would seem it would just be you just choose whichever one requires the least number of signatures right. and, so, actually, yeah go ahead so the difference is with a group petition the council must act um, and if the council says no that's the end okay. with an initiative, the council not only has to act if the council does not adopt the the initiative measure can move forward with an, an additional number of signatures and go to the voters for adoption. Whereas the group petition ends at council action, whether that action is a referral, a tabling, an adoption, a non-adoption, a failure to adopt. Initiative does not necessarily end if the council fails to adopt or does not do anything, it can continue on and move all the way through to showing up on the ballot at an election. Mm -hmm. And would that procedure be acceptable under MGL for zoning bylaws? Do we have the uh, freedom to do that? I, the other, the, so that helps me with uh, the first category, thank you. But the second category, again, it's my ignorance, but my sense is that that zoning, the zoning process is strictly governed by state law and we can't come up with our own ways of doing it under state law, but maybe we can. So we can't that, contradict uh, state law. Can't contradict right. it. We can't we can, contradict state okay. law. So state okay. law says we have to consider something, a zoning bylaw request made by 10 registered voters. But mm -hmm. if we deny it, if we say no to that request, it doesn't right. go any further. But if right. they get, I think it's 250, or 200, I'd have to look up the charter, to move through the initiative process, then right. it could end up on a ballot eventually. And I guess the question, and it's just a, it's just a question, I haven't really thought much about this, is do we want zoning bylaws to be, um, uh, you know, have this available to them? Because nine is clearly something we can put in or not put in. And they're already, well, yeah, go ahead. The nine is Number. required by the charter. Even if we don't list it here, they can always do it. For zoning? For zoning, yes. 
number nine because that's a charter allowance so we as a council can't say we won't accept that for zoning that okay. is bylaws in general okay. any okay. bylaw okay all right so the only thing for zoning um or for, for zoning and bylaws that we could remove i mean we it, council counselor would be weird right but manager or town committee we could remove in general um for zoning for zoning yeah for the zoning list it would be the manager or the town committee the and town committees other than zba and planning board because those are specifically listed in the in mgl yeah i would think that yeah those would be questionable i maybe could we discuss i mean darcy you have your hand up so let me let me go to darcy yeah i just um I guess I I want to make sure that residents know what their avenues are and say, for example, the wage theft bylaw. Um, a group of people, um, I can't remember, did they come? I think at some point they came to the council and there was a request made, does anybody want to work with them? Essentially, they asked for meetings of individual counselors and right. they sort of lobbied individual counselors for, hey, we want this to get the council to pass. Are you willing to help us do that? So in right. a way, yes, but it was individual meetings. So they were savvy enough to know how to do that. Um, it, I, I guess I'm interested in making sure that residents... Well, it, it says by counselor sponsor, and that's what... I think everybody knows that. Find a counselor to sponsor it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so. Yep. We so we aren't taking on the task of asking people are interested as counselors. We're putting that on the residents to go out and contact counselors. Well, yeah. can go either way, right? That's or a natural go way. Yeah, go either way. You know, I mean, I think there are many, many avenues available. So uh, some are more cumbersome than others, but uh, they're there. George, yeah, but, you said you were concerned about the manager or designee or the town committee. Yeah, I just want to talk about them. I'm not sure I'm concerned, but they, oh, I, okay. I'm thinking. But I'm thinking that you know, um, normally it would be through the planning board, uh, the ZBA. Um, think yeah, about our IDD, whatever the TSO ones are requiring. That's right, through the DPW. That's right. That's right. The, the water, all those water things. Yes. Yeah. So that that should stay. You're absolutely right. Town and then town committee, you know, yeah. we're going to be getting something that's sort of planning department, but it's also historical commission. So, you know, there's the we'll municipal trust. There's other committees that may want changes. ECAC, to, I think, is eyeing some bylaw changes. <laughs> okay. Okay. And your thought is that they would then uh, bring them forward and um, they would have standing. Yeah. And, uh, but it still, in the end, goes back to the planning board and its subcommittee, et cetera, et cetera. For so, a zoning bylaw, yeah. Exactly, so that, good, okay. I think that's, that answers my concerns. Any other thoughts or concerns about this? So Darcy, the point was to, to help clarify things and, and hopefully this does that, but I don't know, you still may have some thoughts on whether it does, but the reason it was motivated by desire to just to be very clear so when somebody says, you know, well, who can bring a bylaw? Um, we can point to the rules of procedure and say, there's the answer. And if there's anything missing, we should bring it up. But I think this is a pretty good uh, and exhaustive list with many avenues available to the appropriate parties to, to bring, bring action. So, but that was where this came from. Well, if I'm not, I don't see any other hands or any comments, so I'm prepared to entertain a motion to recommend to the town council um, changes to uh, rule 8.1. Um, and I don't think we amended it, so it's just as presented. I'll second it. 
So we have a motion and a second to recommend these changes um, as presented to the council. Um, any further comments or questions or? Okay, then I'm prepared to move directly to a vote. I'm gonna begin with Darcy this time. Yes. And Pat. Aye. And Sarah. Aye. And Mandy. Aye. And the chair is also a yes, so that is 5-0. So I know we're almost out of time, George. Could we yeah. deal with 9.4, 9.5, the unanticipated items, since we're trying to get all the rules to the council at once? We're definitely trying to get all the rules to the council at once. Um, the chair is thinking the council meeting is on Monday, and he's going to have to prepare a detailed and exhaustive report uh, to satisfy the council. But yes, um, I'm willing to go there. Um, we are close to our ending time. I'm willing to stay uh, longer, but, and I just need three of you to agree. Um, uh, we do have a couple of other things we need to talk about briefly. I don't want us to just stop after we get through 9.5. Are people willing to tackle 9.5? Because then I'm we would- sure. be... I'm okay. hoping it'll be quick because I can explain it since I'm the one that proposed no. it. So I, I just put them up. Um, I, I will type them into the document we were working on, but I sent an email to George. The KP law update, e-update we got indicates that the governor signed um, a law that changes MGL chapter 40A section five. Right. Um, and we have in our rules references to how many votes are required for zoning bylaw stuff that directly relate to that section. And that section changed. So I thought while we're updating our rules, we should update the rules to conform with the new law. And so what is happening here is under our current rules, the law, well, under the law before it was changed in January, there was a, a sort of a protest way, which would have upped a properly protested zoning bylaw change to require 10 votes. That has now been rewritten to go down to only nine votes, two thirds. Um, so that's why it, it, it's a recommended delete it from the requiring 10 votes and essentially moving it to nine votes because that was rewritten under the law the governor signed. Yep. Um, the law the governor signed keeps some zoning bylaw changes at two thirds, moves right. other zoning bylaw changes to simple majority. Right. It is too difficult to in the rules of us to elucidate which are which because yeah. it gets very complicated. Yes. So the way I was trying to deal with this was instead of saying a zoning bylaw change at nine votes there, change the wording to certain zoning bylaw changes in accordance with the charter and MGL chapter 40A section five, and then repeat that language, add it in into the seven votes and essentially repeat that language. Um, and then it's on the, uh, hopefully our town attorney as zoning bylaws come and GOL to determine which, is which, which quantum right. is needed for which particular zoning change. And so really this is, this is not anything other than the law changed at the state level and I'm trying to make our rules conform to that new law. Darcy, Makes please. Sense to me. Darcy. Yeah. Do do we need to um, do we need to double check it with KPLA or not? Well, we've all received the memo, and um, and, and we got a the memo actually came from KP Law. Right. So what they, they probably do is they'd simply say, "Well, did you read the memo?" <laughs> and I actually went to the to the. The, the acts of 2021 or whatever to see the actual language to try yeah. and make sure this this worked so my, my reading of the memo uh, supports the changes mandy's making here and there obviously she's absolutely correct that that is very complicated in for a number of these and there makes absolutely no sense and i'm not sure we could do it to, to specify in each case what is what so what this does is it simply alerts uh, anyone reading this and alerts the counselors to the fact that there has been a change. Um, and um, and so the 10 votes is out. It's now a two thirds. That just goes. Um, and then for the others, it simply says certain um, and alerts you to the fact that um, there have been changes. And 
to, to learn what those changes are, you may very well have to re resolve to KP law um, or read that memo very carefully uh, or attend a GOL meeting. Um, but I think this is a good way of just alert, first of all, making our rules of procedure come into conformance with the law, because uh, right now they're not. Um, th these, these statements are false given the current uh, change in the law. So this brings them in conformity with the law, doesn't try to uh, find, you know, to, to specify what's what in each case, because that would be far too much, but simply alerts people to the fact that it has changed. And um, so I would think this is a pretty much straightforward, no brainer, but um, that's just my thought. Um, anyone else on this? Um, the memo is a, a typical KP law memo. It, 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 it makes my stomach. I not think up. we all read it, George. It, it, yeah. It, um, right here. <laughs> it, it's good. I mean, it's, it's just, you know, it's why I never made it to law school. Um, so, all right, then I'm prepared, unless there's further discussion to, to make a motion to accept, um, recommend, recommend to the council, sorry, to recommend to the council, uh, changes to what rule of procedure is this it's again? Rule 9.5 to conform to chapter 40A. So, um, MGL chapter 40A. To recommend these changes to rule procedure 9.5 um, as presented. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Well, so we Pat can have it. Pat, Pat has seconded. We need you. Darcy and Sarah to step up for something. They're, they're, newbie, they're newbies. They're newbies. They're just give them at least feet. one meeting, Pat. They're gonna get their feet wet. They're gonna right. They have to learn how the culture works here. Um, so we have a motion. It's been seconded. Any further discussion, thoughts, comments before we proceed to a vote? Seeing none, I'm going to go directly to a vote. I'm going to start with Sarah this time. Aye. And Pat. Aye. And Darcy. Yes. The chair is a yes. And Mandy. Aye. So again, it's 5-0 to recommend these changes to 9.5 to the council. So we have miraculously gotten through all, I believe, of the ROP changes. There also were a couple made at a previous meeting. And uh, my understanding is that it's the chair's responsibility to put these all together. Um, I, maybe I'll consult with Mandy at some point or Lynn in as to the format um, so that counselors, when they get it, will be able to see clearly uh, both what was and what is being proposed as a change. And I'll provide a rationale for each change um, in a document. Mandy. So I've got them. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll do the four that we did today. I will touch base with Lynn, who was holding the document for the ones we already did right. so that they can all be in one document that then I will turn into a PV PDF that can be used for the meeting. Right. And then I will provide a report, which will um, provide a rationale for um, each of the changes um, or something. Right. Um, Darcy, please. I thought that we were going to vote on the rule about uh, limiting our 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 discussion for our presentations to two minutes and being able to interrupt to call the question. Um, I believe. Help me here, Mandy. We um, we did make the change for um, interrupt. We did make the recommendation at the previous GOL meeting. Right. That is, we did make that recommendation to allow counselors to uh, call the question, um, to interrupt and call the question. We did not, to my memory, make any change to the length of, of the, uh, we kept it at three minutes, though we wanted to discuss changing it to two. We haven't done that yet. Um, yeah. are, there, are there any others that we had outstanding? This is that, um, Darcy's correct that that was something I believe I wanted to talk about today. Um, Actually, no. So uh, no. So I no. think we yeah. voted. Um, let me get my notes. Um, we voted at um, on J January first to add the language to call the previous question before the phrase 
or to doubt the presence of a quorum and the phrase or to speak without recognition after colleagues. So we voted to recommend the changes to 6.3 D and 6.3 E two minutes yep. Yep. unanimously on the sixth. Yes, okay. Uh, we also made a change to um, ROP 4.3 to change shall to may. Right. To reflect the uh, actual practice of the chair of the president and yes. the presiding officer. So we have Darcy made three changes already, recommended three changes to the council. Now we've made another set of changes, but we have not, as you pointed out, we have not yet discussed um, uh, the uh, or voted on changing the time uh, limit from three to two. No, that that was part of the one. Apparently, my I believe what we did was we wanted to leave it the way it was to see how it worked in the council meeting uh, with Lynn bringing it up as an issue. That's and what I thought. That, Maybe my, yeah. my notes must be wrong then. And well, then what, what I'd like to change it to two because I thought that three minute three minutes for a presentation um, or three to, or more minutes for a presentation, sorry is important, but uh, I don't think it's necessary for counselors to speak more than two minutes um, in a particular turn. I guess my question is just a very practical one and I apologize to my colleagues. I don't remember if we actually voted on that. Uh, my, my report could be read as saying we did and I'd have to check the minutes now. Um, did we actually well, vote we to decided, make that? And I don't know whether we voted either, George, but we decided not to change it until yeah. we actually implemented it in the council yeah. or the so president. My notes say that our vote on January 6th was to also change three minutes to two minutes, but because we were gonna bring these as a package and that would take months yeah. or whatever, um, that we were gonna ask her to enforce the three minutes to begin with. I, we well, have to go back to the minutes. Yeah, no, I think you may be right, Mandy. Our, the yeah. January 6th minutes. Yeah, we I'll have to check that. So Darcy, that there's confusion there, and it's it's on me, um, whether me that. Yeah, okay, maybe Andy has a moment she can check. Um, my report um, that I wrote apparently um, <laughs> seems, seems to suggest that we did in fact uh, make that proposal, which means we voted yep. on. So here's the motion. Motion Thanks. from the minutes that we adopted last meeting. Haneke moved, seconded by DeAngelis, to recommend the Town Council revise Rule 6.3D to add the phrase, quote, to call the previous question, end quote, before the phrase, quote, or to doubt the presence of a quorum, end quote, and to add the phrase, quote, or to speak without recognition, end quote, after the word colleague, and to revise rule 6.3E to change three minutes to two minutes. Okay. Sorry. Voted five zero by roll call. Right, thank you very much. So Darcy, we did actually vote on it in the previous meeting. Um, and so it would be in this group of proposals to the council and the council of course may very well reject them and counselors including yourself can certainly speak to it but this committee has already in a previous uh you know existence already voted on that okay i i wish i had been part of that discussion because i you know I well, you will, you will be certainly at the council level and um so that that's yeah so you would definitely have a voice there and um and I think it's a good, quite open question whether counselors, in fact, want to give up that extra minute. Um, and that's a decision that we'll make as a body. But we did recommend it. And I'm sorry I didn't remember that we, as part of the vote, but we did. Um, what we do have in that report also are a list of things that are future agenda items that um, I would like us to just uh, begin to think about. Um, in terms of going forward. So at the moment, again, this seems to be recurring every meeting, uh, the timeline for the town manager, I'm, I'm gonna talk to Lynn about this and see what she would like to do with it. Um, we are responsible in some sense for uh, creating this timeline and making sure it's in agreement or hopefully in agreement with the town manager's wishes, but also the process of evaluation and, and so forth is something GOL is not supposed is supposed to manage or oversee. And so that's something that I'm going to reach out to Lynn on and hopefully bring back to us at some point soon. Um, the bylaws for future review, um, 
someone here maybe has to instruct me in, in open meeting law procedures. Um, we've lost two members, obviously, and one of the members, uh, Andy, had uh, three uh, bylaws that he was working on. He's brought me up to date on where he stands with them, but there's still some work that needs to be done. And um, I was thinking of, uh, well, I don't know how, I was thinking of reaching out to individuals um, and requesting them to take on those uh, missing, uh, those bylaws that need still some further work. It's not a huge amount. Uh, each one of us took two or three and Mandy's done most of the work she needs to do for hers. I still have a little bit more to do on mine. Um, I have quite a bit, yeah. yeah I have and, something I'm working on. Right. So that document's in your, in your packet. I know you've got a whole lot of stuff that you were supposed to look at and for this meeting. At some point, you might want to just glance at it, um, but I just want to make sure it's okay. Can I do this as chair? Just reach out. I don't think I can, but I, I just don't know. Um, and, and approach an individual member of the committee and say, would you take on this task? Um, and and uh, and they can say no or they can say yes, and then I can report back to the committee. I'm just trying to it's sign up. It's not a policy here. decision. It's not, it's, you're asking somebody to do an assignment for the group. Right. I mean, I could put the document up. Yeah, I could put the document up, or Mandy could put the document up, and we can look at it now. But it's it's already six twelve forty one, um, and I can just point out uh, I have two items that I mean, Sarah, for instance, one of them involves AgCom. Um, I think, and and it both involve things that that you've had experience with in the past, and I was going to uh, ask you to consider. I don't have to decide now, but ask you to consider taking on one or two of them, and it would be easier for me to to give you the details outside of the meeting for you to ponder and get back to me or get back to the committee. Um, and the same with Darcy. Um, I, and so rather than take up time now, I was going to reach out to you individually over the next couple of days and have the document is public and it's available to you today and it's available to the public. Um, it's been available for a long time. And I wanna just point to one or two things I'd like to ask you to do. And my question to the committee is, can I do that? Or do I have to wait till the next meeting? Why would you not be able to do it? Yeah, that's my. Okay, I, I, do it. Okay, good. So I, you know, and again to the public, if they're paying attention, this document is is out there, and I'm just trying to divvy up work. Um, and so, and you both are free to say no, um, but um, I will reach out to you on that. Okay, so that's the item, uh, future bylaws. We had committed to get this done by March. I, I think it's still doable, but a lot of it. As you'll discover, requires work by town staff, and and they're you know as usual they're doing forty thousand things. Um, so I'm reaching out. In my case, I'm reaching out to um, who is it? Uh, the finance director. Um, you know, uh, I know that uh, Andy was reaching out to Dave Zomack, um, and these folks got a thousand things on their plate. But we're trying to get these bylaws um, issues settled. Okay, that's the motive, the motive here. So I will reach out to our two new members about that. Um, on that list, there are a number of things that we could begin to take up. Um, and I guess I need some thoughts from you quickly about what you would like to have on the agenda next time. Um, at the moment, I'm not aware of anything that is other than the time manager timeline and the bylaws for future review. Um, I'm not aware of anything that is coming to us. Um, Lynn is no longer with us, um, but anybody aware of anything that's that's uh, headed to us other than what's on this report in this report? Um, for instance, uh, do people feel that we should talk about um, uh, whether we should have a single policy for um, making recommendations, committee recommendations for finance, ZBA, and planning board? Should right now it's split between two committees? We have our own procedures here on GOL. CRC has its procedures. Um, do people want to take up time and discuss whether it's certainly been raised by some counselors, whether there should be a single, whether we would want to recommend to the council that there be a single process that all committee, all council committees follow, or do we want to allow individual committees to follow, to, to adopt their own procedures? That's what we've been doing, um, but I think some have an issue with that. That could be an item on the agenda. Um, I think it's an important item to get on the agenda. Okay, so that I hear at least one member would like that to be put on the agenda. Um, I would second that, George. Okay, good. Now, we also have the issue of how public comment is to be shared. In the report, what we came to as a committee the last time we met was the thought that um, 
maybe a website could be created and the chair could reach out to the town clerk, uh, the council clerk, I'm sorry. Um, again, maybe what people need to do is read the report, um, but there are a number of things here that would be potential topics for us uh, in the next month. Uh, what have we learned from COVID? Um, you know, do we wanna change or make any recommendations about accessibility? Um, so these are governance and organization type issues. They're in the report. Um, I would certainly add, at least for next meeting, I will add as an agenda item um, the issue of a single policy, and we can talk about that. Um, if you see anything else in that report that you'd like to add to the agenda, uh, let me know, um, because I'm open to adding them. I'm not, be, I'm not gonna be making the agenda for a while, but uh, I'm looking for topics. Um, we have a lot to do with the bylaws still, so I, I definitely would like to have some time to actually dig into that next time, but often we don't have time for it. So that will be on there. And then the time manager, a town manager timeline will be on there. And right now it looks like also the issue of a single policy will be on there. Anything else that people have in mind they wanna raise now, or you could send me an email. We don't have the minutes for um, today's meeting, so we'll hold off on that. Um, I do not see any public present, so we do not have uh, public comment. And am I missing anything? I got pieces of paper here everywhere. Um, I think that is the entire agenda. Um, okay, so I'm prepared to call this meeting to an end, if that is acceptable. All right, welcome aboard. Thank you. I'm just gonna say the same thing. Thank welcome, you. Darcy and Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> read the report. <laughs> we'll read the report. Please, yeah. And if you have any uh, thoughts other than the one that's raised today, uh, let me know. And I will reach out to the two of you over the next couple of days and we'll talk about uh, those uh, bylaw uh, reviews and see if we can get some of you to take take on some. Okay. okay. All right. Go well. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye.